Hey Miami, welcome back to the Magic City Wrap Up. As you know, we're in the heart of hurricane season, and it's important that we all stay informed and prepared. We're tracking Tropical Storm Laura, and so should you. To help you out, the City of Miami has launched its official hurricane guide with information on what to do before, during, and after a storm. Just visit miamigov.com forward slash hurricanes. All right, last week's fish kill in the bay was definitely an eye-opener, but the city took quick action to increase oxygen levels in our Miami waters and announced some big plans to keep our waters clean. The unpleasant sight and smell of the recent fish kill in our Miami waters is what Miami Mayor Francis Suarez called a wake-up call. Thousands of fish turning up dead, seemingly overnight. But the question is how? And what is the city doing to restore the bay? Well, at first, everybody thinks it must be related to an illegal discharge. Some type of chemical is getting into the waterways and, and causing problems. But water testing didn't reveal any pinpoints that was happening. What we discovered is that it relates to the overall health of Biscayne Bay. Over the last several years, we've lost about 90% of the seagrasses in the water. And the seagrass is what produces that oxygen that the fish need to live. So the city deployed the Scavenger 2000, a contracted vessel used to pick up seven to 8,000 tons of trash from our Miami waters per week. It also puts oxygen in the water to alleviate some of the stress. We oxygenate 150,000 liters of oxygen injected into the water every hour. And we hit the problem areas to help increase the dissolved oxygen in the water. On top of that, Public Works also deployed three portable pumps to parks along the waterways. And what we see is that those pumps were increasing oxygen levels by more than 30% where they were operating. And that helped save a lot of fish and other mammal life. Now, despite what we've been seeing, Dodd says that the water is perfectly safe for recreational use. We just have to be very careful about how we impact it, that we're not letting plastic bottles or other type of trash or contaminant to get into the water. The city is aggressively working on long-term measures to improve the health of the bay, beginning with a $270,000 project. With 1,000 inlet filters and pollution control devices on our stormwater system, this will allow us to filter a lot of the sediments, the pesticides, and also the plastic that ultimately ends up in our bay. Mayor Suarez is hoping to have the project completed in less than a year, but residents can do their part now by not fertilizing their lawns from June through September or before heavy rainfall to keep our Miami waters safe and clean for our community and wildlife. Exactly. Let's do our part to protect our home. You know how else we can protect our community? You got it. By wearing a face mask over our mouth and nose every time we step out. Because face masks are required to be worn in public at all times in the city. So make sure you mask up. Okay, that'll do it for the Magic City Wrap Up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.